for one of our top clients saying they wish to leave. Oh, like, how rude. That's not what we want. That's the opposite to what we want to be achieving. I think there's always a bit of a fine line for us. We always feel between giving the client too much communication or not enough. We always live by the case to go, version one's better than version zero. They said it was tough letting us know. It felt like splitting up with a girlfriend. It was like, if you don't want to, why are you? We've launched uh, an alternative brand called Thrive Financial Coaching, and we have a, a series of financial training. There's some mini mastermind elements. The coaching side has always been the area that you prefer, and I think it's lovely to see the companies that you've helped develop. Hi there, and welcome to the Leaky Bucket Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Morgan, and this is the Financial Performance Podcast for entrepreneurs looking to get a better understanding of their numbers, to plug the leaks in their business, and to move from surviving to thriving. Hey everybody, and welcome to the Leaky Bucket Podcast, and this is episode now number 62. Sam, thank you very much for, for joining me. You're welcome. So we're going to kick off. We're going to head into, uh, I think, the leak of the week, first of all. And the leak of the week this week is about, yeah, I suppose a more, more impactful leak. So I think it's probably better off to start back for a bit and go for, for a number of years now that I think you'd probably argue that I was the, the face of the company, but also the drawing people in and people were working with me. Yeah. And uh, probably not great for my ego elements. It was got too big of a head, but lots of people working with me. Yeah. And the, over the last definitely two years, maybe even three, we've pushed towards it being about the brand as the business and people working with the business because of what we do, not because of me. Yeah. Because often it wasn't me doing the work. I just was the contact for the client. So they might have felt that I'd done the work, but they didn't necessarily. I'm not really sure that you were necessarily the contact because other people still had plenty of contact with clients. It was more the fact that you did the main impactful meetings the work and general meetings were done by other people but the impactful ones are such that you get an impact in that moment and you can see and feel the impact rather than the fact that somebody's done their accounts or something and they they get the result but they don't know all the bits that's happened in between as such yeah and i think yeah i, I do i'd agree to a degree i think there's an element of yeah, I suppose my, almost my, we've made me almost a key person of influence, if you like, within the business and trying to be that within the scope of what we're about. But then people are like, oh, I want to work closely with you. And then not everybody necessarily can. And then we've gone, well, I can't, you get spread thin. Yeah. And then actually I need to be able to work on our business because we need to develop and we need to grow. Anyway, the concept of this or the outcome of this is that actually we had a, a surprise message from a, a client who we'd consider one of our, our top clients saying that they wish to leave and certainly not something we were expecting certainly from the conversations with that client over, over recent periods there were some challenges with hmrc owing them some money but it's difficult to communicate with hmrc and there's that element but that's probably the only real area of insight that they could be unhappy with as such but yeah i think for me, a key question was asked during one of our like coaching calls was to go, is this an acceptable consequence of being able to extract me from the business? And I, I sat on the fence and went with this a yes and a no. And I think there's an element of a yes to go, actually, we've got some clients who are much, much smaller clients in that respect, or clients that aren't maybe our ideal ones, but they're perfectly acceptable clients and everything we do and go actually we expect on occasion some of those who maybe they may have thought they were going to get to speak with them maybe not heard that that's not going to happen and whatever and they may move on but having actually the type of ideal client that we'd like to gain more of deciding that they'd like to move on was a yeah it was just like a oh yeah that hurts a bit and that's not the direction that we wish to be going in yeah, so it certainly felt like a bit of a, a leak and a challenge over the last week to go, well, that's not what we want. That's the opposite to what we want to be achieving. 
what what were your sort of initial thoughts and feelings and everything when we yeah when I I discussed the, the message with you so I I don't think I was as, as surprised as you I don't have any contact with that client so I'm a bit more distant from it if you like and I think the reason I wasn't as surprised is although I wasn't aware and still we don't feel there were any sort of issues off the back of it and certainly after a uh, conversation with that client you still didn't feel there were any sort of there's no specific reasons of what we don't or what anything that's happened or they'd like more of or anything like that as such other than having you as the contact which we didn't feel was something that we could change going forward necessarily no and i think it's key to point out to actually to go that they also mentioned to go they think it's right for our business what we're doing it's just not right for them in what they want from that level of relationship I did try to get some further insight to go is that something that they're going to get from the other the alternative and, and so on yeah they for whatever reason that's not been responded to they don't want to yeah don't want to insight into that but yeah sorry carry on yeah i think we've made some massive impact within their company and some and their personal life as well which they acknowledged they were the ones that sort of raised that and things and i think for me the way that i saw it is they're a person that wants growth all the time um and it's similar to us in that respect they're they're always looking at their company to see what they can do better what they can change where are the next step of where they want to go to what are their goals etc and i think sometimes People can look at bits and go, actually, other people that have a lot larger companies are working with XYZ and that's where I need to be going. And then I would have the same, I don't know, it will open some doors for me, et cetera. Because I don't think for me, and I'm not necessarily saying that this is the case with them. I, it was what was running through my head at the time that actually I do a lot of bits of making friends with people that opens doors. And I believe that actually it's not about what you know all the time, it's who you know. And I think sometimes working in specific groups can mean that it opens doors in other areas that could help your company. And when you first said about it to me, that's what, for me, came to mind. Yeah, I think what we always try and do when there's ever any leak or any challenge or anything like that as well is also try and look and go okay what feedback and information can we get and then not just oh okay we'll just bend over backwards and we'll give everything that what everything we need to change loads of stuff sometimes actually it's just take it on board and just go okay but it is what it is that actually there's nothing that we want to change off the back of it and i think realistically there's only a couple of things just to go over probably some of that time where I was having now less contact with that particular client and certainly with other clients as well, that maybe there should have been some more communication for me specifically to those clients just to go, this is how that's heading. Because I feel like there was a potential that some people could think it was... Can feel? Yeah, it could feel like then because there hasn't been as many explicit conversations, it could feel like there's a washed handover. Whereas actually the handover in the background was... Yeah, from their perspective, it could feel rushed. So we knew internally yeah. all the steps we'd put in place and how we made sure that everything was smooth and it. there were so many meetings internally, documents provided, time set out in diaries in case there needed to still be communication even after the handover to ensure it was smooth, etc. But that wasn't explicitly communicated to the clients. I think there's always a bit of a fine line for us. We always feel between giving the client too much communication or not enough because some clients don't like receiving lots of information. Some clients like to receive loads and that's in both changes and within the work that's being carried out. Yeah, I'd I'd agree. But it was my element to go, actually, I feel like I could have done probably some more in that respect. And that's probably about it just to go actually uh, as well just from everybody from the team can they all look at it and just go can they just take a look at themselves and maybe 
their area and their department and just go, is there something that you go, do you know what? I probably could have done a bit more that just made it feel to that client and, and to other clients as well to feel like we were doing everything we possibly could. Because it's no doubt that I think we are, but is the communication that we're delivering out one that demonstrates that? Yeah. So the same as me having maybe having a few more meetings with that client just to go, this is how it's going to be. These are all the things that we've done and so on. That's probably the only real learning I probably, uh, that, that we're going to change, if you like. Yeah, uh, yeah. At the back of it. Yeah, definitely. And that was the discussions we had off the back of it was there was an element for you specifically of, I don't know whether you'd call it sort of disappointment because it came as a shock to you and you liked this client and the, the intricacies of the work that was being carried out within their business and therefore the bits that we were achieving off the back of it and seeing the success that they'd made in both their personal and business growth. So I think there was possibly an area of a, a little bit of personal element to for it for you, but the that lasted for not to say a split second as such, but it didn't last very long before you were straight on to, okay, what can I do to improve this? Is there anything that we should have done or should be doing now for specifically our higher level clients, but then looking across the board as well to go, is there anything we need to change off this? And that was the areas we came up with. So there weren't some high errors, but I think ultimately the bit that I said to you is actually this will happen with some of the bigger clients because you achieve the successes with them and bits and they will be looking for the next thing. They're always looking for what else is out there in the same way we do always looking for what else is out there. So we will get some of those with some of the larger clients. Yeah. I think if I'm being completely honest, there was that moment of frustration element, yeah, to go, obviously, what we do is that financial control, clarity, and then through to freedom. And I felt like they'd really gone through that quite well with us. They come from quite a messy financial position that didn't really contain much control because it was done on quite old fashioned, done on paper. And there was no real clarity, I think, for the business owner where everything was at. And to go, oh, actually, we've taken them through such a journey. Oh, where's the appreciation sort of thing? Yeah, that, that was the, the spur of the moment type reaction. Your initial like. feelings. Yeah, which is like, oh, like, oh, how, how rude. Where, where's the appreciation? That was the initial thing. And then it was like a disappointment. I went, oh, I really like working with this line. They challenge some of the norms that go on within business. I feel like we really understand them, their journey and their business well. And we've challenged them on some of the things that they particularly want. And like I say, helped to get things personally. So there was a bit of a, that personal disappointment element onto it. And then it was the thing to go, okay, have the conversation and see if that actually their mind can be changed. If it can't, life does move on. What can we learn? Should we change anything? And then go, we need to move forward. Yeah, I think ultimately the overriding fact of this is that you will get these bits in business. The clients move on, ones that you weren't expecting, and you will get that sometimes. And sometimes there can be that disappointment there. Sometimes there's moving on and you feel like that's actually, oh, that's a, that's a sort of a relief or whatever. But actually sometimes there can be the case where that does feel, ultimately you create some sort of relationship with them, don't you? So therefore there can be that client that it does feel a little bit rubbish when you're here in that moment but the overriding element is what can we do to improve stuff what could we have done and what could we do now and ultimately we only want the best for the clients anyway there's never bad feelings there or anything like that ultimately so if this client wanted to come back then we wouldn't have any issues with that there's no bad feelings we want the best for them and their business still and them as people in what they want and I think that's the overriding aspect that you still want the best for that person and the best for their company. And if that's what they feel they need to do, then that that's up to them. But the door is always left open. Yeah. And I did appreciate that. I put myself in their shoes. They said it was tough letting us know. It felt like splitting up with a girlfriend <laughs> was, was how they worded it, worded it. And it was, yeah, it was nice to know that but at the same point it was like if you don't want to why are you saying yeah it was that element but it was there seeing it from a bigger picture but 
it's one of those things that like I say it it's happened before. It will probably happen again. Um, and you just have to go. It's part of the journey of business, and life moves on. Yeah, and everyone has to do what they feel is best for them in that moment, don't they? And ultimately, all you can do is do the best for the person, and then hope that things go well for them but if they do want to come back at any point or do feel they need to then the door's open for them and that that's how it is isn't it right so moving on the epic win of the week yes so for a period of time now we've been doing some one-to-one coaching with some of our accounting clients but what we felt was there was an opportunity that uh, it's certainly those clients who do the coaching are probably the ones getting the best results But we felt like, how can we extend this out? And we've launched uh, an alternative brand called Thrive Financial Coaching. And we have a a series of packages and options available for people that is financial training. There's some mini mastermind elements to be able to get a to be able to get a, a grip on what the current challenges are in your business and get other people's views and opinions on that. And then through to other stages as well, but mainly around effective financial planning, business planning, and then holding yourself accountable to be able to do that. So that's launched. The initial launch out to existing MBS accountants, clients, has been working well. We've got some initial interest, some people coming on and signing up. We're doing some trials of various stuff. And all of that was... Actually, we had it, like I said, for some time, but actually with the restructure that we had was to go, actually, there's an opportunity for me to have the time to be able to push and launch that properly. What's it meant for you? I think for me, it's nice to see you pushing out more into the area that you definitely prefer. It is The coaching side has always been the area that you prefer compared to the technical element side. And coaching provides awesome results. And I think... It's lovely to see the companies develop, which is why I think the previous one probably had such an impact on you that you do like to see that that you've helped in that company. And that's definitely what the coaching provides there. I think um, it was nice to see that it's uh, finally launched because I feel like it's been something that's been in the planning for a good number of years. We've had bits of coaching within the company um, over that period but you definitely wanted to have it as a sort of separate entity because it's a large decision for people to move accountants and I think the decision is smaller when somebody wants to do um, more of a coaching based element and it was just coming up with something that worked for how you wanted it structured so that it was informative and helpful for people so you had your first one this week. I, I forget how many people you say were on there, but a lot more than I was expecting necessarily for a first one. I think you were quite happy with how it went. How did you feel the first one went for you? Yeah, I think general concept went well. Yeah, it's, it's, it, there's obviously going to be lots of learnings and things to come out from it. And, and I think there always is. We always live by the case to go version one's better than version zero. If we wait around for ages trying to get it perfect, you just never end up launching because you're always going, oh, yeah, but we could improve that and we could improve this. It was to go, actually, how do we get the minimum viable product that we think can go out there, do that, and then learn from it? So there'll certainly be some lessons and maybe we'll touch on those in future episodes. But yeah, it was overall was a positive to go. Actually, we had some real good discussions and challenges. We, We talked about the ultimate KPI within business, which I believe is the earnings per hour of the business owner. So we talked about that and how you can uh, measure it and why why that's important. Yeah, it's just good to get going. It's good to, yeah, to to start moving along with that. The next challenge is then looking for people to fill up our, what we call our our Thrive boardroom. So yeah, we've we've got six places. We've got one already filled. And then we're just looking to fill those other five in there to, yeah, to, to really get that sort of boardroom going along for businesses that, that don't have that level of advisory going on. But they can just bounce ideas and things off peers, challenge where they're going, 
bring up their challenges within their business and have that coordinated approach with somebody coaching them through that process. Yeah, I don't think it's going to, I think those places move on pretty quickly because from initial bits that we did when we were just putting it out there to say that this is what we're going to be looking at doing, but we didn't have any date for going sort of live with it, if you like, or for when we were going to be opening up. Uh, feedback on that was really good and certainly from um, one of the groups that you're on there were a number of people that said that they would definitely want to do that as soon as it opens now we're aware that, that doesn't always correspond to people but I think I'm not I can't remember when your next one is that you're on that group but presumably you're say then that it's now open for people to join etc and it's up and running and I expect that the places will be gone at that point because there was some really good positive feedback on the impact that you give within the group and therefore how having more coaching the Thrive Element with you would be highly successful for them. Yeah, I think probably it's important to mention to go, actually, this is born out of the fact of our aim within MBS, right, is to have business owners everywhere thriving, not surviving, hence the name Thrive. But actually, it's to go, the average business owner only makes £12,000 a year. And with the average business owner also working more than 50 hours a week, it was like £4.62 an hour, it meant, on average. We should go, you, you can't employ somebody for that. Yeah, it's not legal. So why is, who's meant to be probably the most impactful person within the business, why are they being paying the least on average? So how do we change that? And through our experience, that's through effective planning, challenging exactly what you do want in the future, working out your visionary and your integrator type roles, having values, all of these things. So yeah, definitely got lots I think we can share and help people on that journey to get to the point where they are achieving their version of yeah. financial success. I think it's actually really important. And I think actually a lot of business owners <laughs> definitely realise that effectively they're on so little pay per an hour. I think um, people often don't actually work it out. I think they get caught up by the headline figures of how much the company's bringing in rather than actually how much they're earning per an hour. And the reality is that not only are, um, are a lot of people not earning very much per an hour when it's worked out, but actually it's probably the most stressful role in the company. That It's not just about the amount of work they have to do, it's the amount of stress and the thinking time that goes into it outside of their working hours that they're putting in as well which actually as an employee you wouldn't have um so i think it's highly important i think you'll do amazing things with it so yeah looking forward to seeing where it goes brilliant bit of a, a peek behind the curtains so this so I, as part of a coaching program that i've joined you have to do some other like personality profiling we've done Mine's gone blank. Can't even think what it's called. What what's the personality profiling element that we've done before? That's a really good question. The one where it goes like DC or your disc. Stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've done disc profiles and that in the past, but this one was a a Colby index, uh, and I came back as what's known as a six 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 three, and then I spoke to the coach. I, I won't go into details of what that means because it's relatively new to me anyway, and I probably can't remember, but. Basically, I spoke to the coach um, from that in a moment and she went, wow, you're the same as me. We're like unicorns. And I was like, uh, is that a compliment or not? Because within our household, there's certainly an element of a, a unicorn is referred to as a bit of a, a knobhead. Yeah. <laughs> when you're having your idiot type moment or you're doing something that's not great, we always refer to it in our family as, yeah, you're being a, you're being a bit of a unicorn. Yeah. Yeah, you certainly find this quite funny. That was what she told me, even though she had no idea. So her comment was actually a compliment to you, wasn't it? It was, and it, it definitely was. When you look at the actual profile and you go through the bits, it's very much Ian, and it, it, it is a, a very much a compliment. And Ian is exceptional at the bits that he does, which is why I know he'll do well with uh, the new Thrive element. But in our household, from when the kids were very little, obviously I didn't like, I don't like, certainly when they were young, didn't like any swearing in front of them or anything like that. So we had a bit of a code thing. And it was before unicorns became really popular, which happened a few years later. The, if 
one of us was just being a bit of a pain and we were a bit frustrated with something or one of our kids was frustrated between us we would have a code that they had been a unicorn that day and obviously a unicorn has something protruding out of their head so it was a bit of a, a code between us and then a few years later unicorns became extremely popular and were out everywhere in the shops and things but it's just stuck hasn't it so even now as the kids are older teenagers and things if they're being a pain about something we will go stop being a unicorn not finding that funny you're being a unicorn at the moment etc so when ian came in and said that she had called him a unicorn obviously she meant it in a nice mythical term of like how rare they are and how amazing they are and stuff but for us it was a little bit of an inside joke as to how we reflect on it at home we have had a good laugh about it but yeah on a serious note the profile itself yeah definitely is you to a t and has some amazing features to it yeah i think it's the ones that are the bottom my bottom ones that really told the story for me like lacking of empathy and uh, they weren't so amazing were they but (laughs) but it's that thing to go yeah i I just know that's definitely in me anyway Um... Should we move on? Should we do what the power move was of the, of the week? Um, I think for me, Sam, it was the, it's, it's a launching a Thrive. It's felt like it's been there for a long time. Not really quite had the format of we known, but had a, had a rough idea of what we were aiming to try and achieve and where we think the real value could be achieved. It was then nailing it down and committing to the fact that actually that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to launch. And that we've got, you know, we've certainly in the first instance, we've got a few months to be able to get it to the first stage. And then we've got a 12-month push to get it to the level that we want it to be going to. How about for you? Yeah, I've got to agree with you. It's been something that I've known for a long time that you've particularly enjoyed in terms of that sort of more coaching side of things. And it's been really nice to see you be able to put that into action. And this has been months and months in the making of, although you get version one out sort of thing, actually there is still prep work that has to happen behind that because you have to make sure version one is actually going to make an impact and it's still going to be good. There will be better versions coming because there's always changes that happen and things. But actually there's lots of prep work in the background to getting things sorted. And one of our team members, Georgia, has been heavily involved in that and is involved in the Thrive element as well with the coaching bits. Yeah, definitely has to be the power move of the week. It's yeah been a massive step for I think you personally and your development and where you want to see things going for yourself. Thank you so much, Sam, for, for joining me yet again. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for, for listening.